Welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today I have a quick video for you on Yearn Finance's new version 3 volts. Okay. Now before I, I do have a flowchart for you. I did. Uh, it's pretty simple, but I, I have a flowchart for you just to just to go through it that way instead of showing you all these docs and stuff like that because there's a uh, quite a few little terms and stuff I want to cover and stuff like that. So anyhow, um, if you want to know how this thing works, I do suggest you to come to the docs here. You can read the docs. Uh, the docs are pretty clear. It's pretty uh, easy and accessible. And then also if you open up the contracts, uh, you will see that the uh, the comments or you know the the commented out the explanations of every single function are well developed in, and uh, very clear and concise and easy to understand so if you're planning on using this at all then you, those are your kind of resources you can kind of go through and, and see what's going on uh, it's a pretty interesting model uh, i'm gonna swing over to the flowchart and kind of explain it to you there so let's go over there now Okay, so here we are on the flowchart. Um, I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. This is actually my second run through. The last time it took me a little bit longer than I'd like. So I'm going to go through this kind of quick and kind of jump and go, go, go fast. Okay, so here we have uh, the new model of uh, Yearn. And I'm going to start here with these, what they're calling tokenized strategies. Okay, so anyone can come along to Yearn and they can take the Yearn tokenized strategy template and they can kind of build their own uh, they, their own vault. Okay. So here we have Ninja Nick. Ninja Nick is, uh, these are all individual individuals. They're not the same guy. They don't have to be, they could be, right? But in this case, they're, they're, can, you can consider them to be individuals and they all have different ideas of how to put the Caesar token to use in uh, DeFi to, to make some yield, right? So maybe deposit here, fold here, use this to lever, like to borrow USDC and put USDC there and stuff like this. Like, so these are all guys with ideas on how to use some token, some individual token to make yield in DeFi. So in this case, I have Caesar token, but keep in mind that in most, most of these ideas, they're usually a, uh, they're usually an LP token, like Caesar ETH. And you put Caesar ETH into this DEX and you, you farm the, the, the reward token, sell the reward token and build more Caesar tokens. Okay, so that's kind of uh, what this case is here. Okay, so these are these these uh, volts, these templates are based on ERC 204626 volts. So these this it makes it standard. Okay, so all of these 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 tractors, they all have the same commands. Okay, they all have you, know, you press the, the the gas button it goes forward you press the brake it stops so they all have the same commands like deposit withdraw and, and things like this okay so here we have users they have caesar tokens they can deposit into these vaults okay and get back what we call a vault share token so in this case he deposited caesar in this vault and he got back caesar green tractor okay <clears throat> And uh, let's say he also deposits into the red tractor and you'll see he gets back Caesar red tractor token. And now these go up in value based on the performance of these tractors, right? Of these yield farm tokenized strategies, right? Now, the thing that they've changed in here is that they've made these tokenized strategies. They all have their own performance fee, okay? Because they are volts, they are individual volts. So they all can set their own performance fee. So in each of these Ninja Nicks can decide what they think is a fair performance fee. Now, for those who don't know, a performance fee is a fee on the profit only. So if he makes you $100, he's going to take $10. He's going to take $20. He's going to take $12, okay, of your profit. Now, uh, Yearn, because they have this template, right? They've made this template and they've made it easy for Ninja Nick to spin up a vault. Then Yearn is going to take a protocol fee, which if they set the protocol fee to 10, in this case, they can set it anywhere between zero and 50, okay? If they set it to 10, then Yearn takes 10% of the 10%. So in this case, one, right? So. You get it. So they're taking a fee on the fee, okay? Just because they've made it uh, uh, simple for these guys to kind of spin up volts based on their ideas. And Yearn will also, you know, help them, you know, like if they have an idea and they don't know how to do something, they can go to the Yearn Telegram and ask questions and th they, these guys are gonna help them to code up these volts, obviously, okay? Now, 
This is the second feature of uh, the Yearn version three system. So as you saw, the first one are tokenized strategies, which are vaults themselves, okay? And here we have uh, a version three vault. So let's say we have dollar bill and he's got a DAO. So it's the dollar bill DAO. And they, instead of, you know, using the, all of these tokenized strategies, they just want a vault, okay? Now, there's some benefits to this, and I will go through them as quick as I can, but so they would all then deposit into this vault all the users or all the community of the dollar bill DAO, okay? Now, again, dollar bill in this case, these are different people, okay? Now, instead, now the first benefit is instead of getting, you know, multiple uh, share tokens, they get a single share token. And this vault will then take the Caesar tokens that they give it, and it will deploy it to these tokenized strategies uh, to get the yield. Now, now, the reason why this is a benefit to get a single vault token is because now you don't, perhaps, like you, you might, depends on where you are, but I, like, I don't, I'm not an accountant, but you probably won't be as accustomed to as many, you won't be victim to as many taxable events, okay? So for example, let's say Dollar Bill sends his Caesar tokens to the green strategy, and then he's like, oh, I wanna move those to the red strategy. Then he's going to have to close down this position, and in most places, or in some places, that's a taxable event, and then he will have to open this position. Whereas if the vault is the thing that's doing the opening and closing and moving of positions, then all he's doing is holding a token, an asset, that's going up in value. And until he actually closes it or sells it, then he has he doesn't have to pay taxes or doesn't have to claim them as, as capital gains quite yet. Now, now like, again, I'm not an accountant, so you'd have to check, make sure you know that's, but that's a benefit, of course, of having that single token in there, okay? Now, the second benefit is uh, maybe Dollar Bill Dow has a lot of really smart people and they all have, you know, the, the good risk management techniques, but dollar bill, he, he just wants easy money, right? So he, he, he can like delegate some of the risk management and stuff to these other guys inside dollar bill DAO. Now I'm going to kind of go through uh, this list of roles. Okay. But keep in mind that the, each one of these roles inside this vault, they have a specific power and I will talk about each power, but keep in mind that it could be, each one of these roles can be a person. It can be a, a smart contract. It can be a keeper bot. It can be, you know, anything. It can be a group of people. It can be a multi-sig. Okay. So I'm going to say a person, he, 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 or so, but keep in mind that it could be a group of people or, or, or any of these things I just listed. Okay. So let's go through them kind of quick and try to get them done. So the first three, we have add strategy, revoke strategy, and force strategy managers. These are different roles, but could be the same person, could be different people again. Okay. So add strategy is basically all, he finds one of these strategies somewhere and he's like, oh, let, let's use that. Now keep in mind that this strategy doesn't need to be even part of the yearn ecosystem like this it's an er as long as it's erc 4626 then this vault can send assets there so even strategies that are already in existence with other protocols then this vault can be like oh let's send some money there let's 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 put some of our assets inside there okay so add strategy is to add some of these tractors to the list of things that this can deposit into revoke is to remove them okay now, force revoke manager is important one. It can remove it even though there is money there, okay? So in order for the revoke strategy manager to remove the red tractor, the red tractor has to be empty of money from this vault. It doesn't have to be empty, but this vault has to be like already taken its money back. Now, there's no money. We didn't send any money there. Let's remove it. Whereas the force revoke manager can, it's kind of more like an emergency where it can say like, yeah, well, let's cut that thing off immediately. And then we'll forget about the money that's there. Okay. And it, it creates bad debt. So the account manager is the person who can kind of set fees on the vault itself. So basically maybe the vault is going to take a deposit or withdraw fee from dollar bill every time he deposits. So this account manager can kind of control that. Okay. Now the queue manager is an important one and a queue manager basically decides 
in which order should these tractors be withdrawn from? Okay, so let's say there are no Caesar tokens inside the vault and Dollar Bill wants to withdraw, then he's got to pull money from one of these tractors. But some tractors are more complicated and hard to get out of than other tractors. So the queue manager will assess that and be like, oh, it's the easiest one, the cheapest one to get out of is the red tractor. So we'll put the red tractor at the front of the queue. So if somebody wants to withdraw and there's no Caesar tokens in the vault, then pull from the red tractor first because it's the cheapest on gas, okay? Or it doesn't have like any kind of time lock or, or, or stuff like this, okay? The reporting manager is the person who can like basically report the profits. Now, like, this is most likely going to be a keeper, but, but if you think of it like this way, let's say uh, 100 tokens are sent to the green tractor. The green tractor is creating yield with those 100 tokens. So now there's 150 Caesar tokens inside the tractor, but the vault doesn't know it yet. So the reporting manager will trigger that and then this price per share will go up because now the vault knows that there's 150 Caesar tokens there now. So that it kind of is a way to kind of you know, check the profits, boys. Let's raise our, our asset price, okay? So now, again, it just doesn't need to be called all the time, but it should be called frequently, okay? The debt manager is the person who sets how much money to send to these vaults. They're calling it debt because if you think about it, oh, we're going to lend you assets and you can put them to yield farming, but we want them back plus profit, okay? So the debt manager can set that. So he can say, oh, I want to send 20 here, uh, I want to send 50 here, and I want to send 30 here, okay? So that's kind of what the debt manager does. The max debt manager will basically set a maximum. So like maybe you cannot send more than 50, 50% 50 of your assets to a single tractor, okay? Uh, deposit limit and withdrawal limit manager, That this is basically for DAOs who want to restrict the assets that go into the vault in some way, maybe for, you know, spinning it up, testing, maybe for like, you know, just for safety or maybe for like considerations of dilution, right? So maybe they will say, oh, you can only deposit a total amount of $1 million in here. And then maybe withdrawal limit is like, oh, you can only take out uh, $10,000 at a time. Okay, so then it kind of makes it so that like there's some control over the in and output of of assets inside this this vault. Okay, minimum idle manager is the person who decides how many Caesar tokens are going to sit in this vault doing nothing, so that people can easily withdraw. So if there's a strategy that's very easy to get out of, then the idle tokens will probably be zero. But if there is if these strategies are complicated and hard to get out of, then they need more idle assets for people to easily get out when they want out. Okay, so that's what that guy does. Uh, profit unlock manager. This one I don't completely understand, but the way I understand it is as follows. Um, let's say th these guys put $100 in, 100 Caesar tokens each. Those 100 Caesar tokens are sent out and th it's producing profit. Then uh, but it, it doesn't know it yet. The price per share hasn't been reported and the, the profit hasn't been reported and the price per share hasn't gone up. But uh, this guy comes in and he deposits. Should he have access to the, that, uh, that profit that was already accumulated? And the answer is probably no, right? But this person can, for some reason, decide yes. So he can set that unlock to zero and then as soon as people like add assets, then they are getting a share of the, the profits that are to be accumulated, okay? Um, unlock manager, debt purchaser. This is an interesting one. Like, like, remember I told you that like, you know, the force revoke might create bad debt or maybe this thing gets hacked, this tractor gets hacked and there's bad debt. So this debt purchaser is a way that they can kind of make the users whole again. So this debt purchaser would have some money somehow and then basically buy that bad debt. So maybe it's an insurance uh, policy for for uh, dollar bill Dow, okay? And then emergency manager basically shuts the vault down. So just like, hey, panic mode, shut the vault down and let's do nothing, find out what's going on and then we can turn it back on and, and assess how to deal with this, okay? So these are the roles that are added to this uh, version three. It's a pretty abundant role system. There's a lot here. And like I said, 
these roles could all be different people. They could all be the same person. They could be a multi-sig. They could be all these kinds of things. But the point is that they can be a DAO. It can be de like decentralized quite a bit in this sense. Okay. So uh, I do want to reiterate that like these strategies do not need to be the yearn strategies. They just need to be ERC-2046 volts, and then th these volts can send to them. Now, the other thing is that like, I, I assume that yearn is going to be watching these strategies, and yearn has its own volts, and it has its own risk like team, right? So like these roles can be, can be made by the, the yearn team as well. So maybe this yearn team might assess these volts and or, or these tokenized strategies and send some of their assets to these. So like these tokenized strategies don't have to be inclusive of this vault, okay? So they, they can be, they can be turned to be inclusive, only this vault can deposit, but these vaults can be put up and then any vault can with deposit and I'm, I'm pretty sure Yearn will watch this and then you know use some of their substantial capital to fund like successful, safe, good uh, strategies tokenized strategies that are running. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope this has been useful and interesting and uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.